Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm actually gonna walk you through creating a placement a script with Magic Leap. I actually went through and created it already. So I wanna show you the step-by-step, -step, all the things that are required in order for you to place items in augmented reality. I'm gonna be using some of the examples that Magic Leap provided already. And then we're gonna be customizing that for the game that I'm working on right now. So let's go into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you some of the things that I did to make the controller work on my new game, Cubix. So, so basically, this controller is it's going to allow us to place any structure anywhere in the scene. So let me open up the solution. And I use a lot of the examples that Magic Leap provided. I made quite a bit of tweaks. So I'll show you what are some of the tweaks that I made and on which classes I made them and why. So let me just open up Unity here. So I'm looking at one of the classes right now that I that I modify. In this class right now is the level manager. This one is the one that is responsible for creating a level in Cubix. It goes through and it reads the information from these JSON files. So each JSON file has basically a data structure and that data structure represents the tiles in the game. So what I needed to do is I wanted the level manager to actually keep track of, you know, when when a level is created, but not only not only when a level is created, but when when I want to create a level. And what I mean is, if you if I want the controller to actually create the level, I needed a reference in the level manager, and this can be structured in many different ways. I decided to add a required component at the very top of the class, which is of controller connection handler. This one is the one that is available from Magic Leap. So they provide that as part of the Unity package for Magic Leap. So what I did there is, let's go back to that class, level manager. So what I did, what I did is I, I made it a required component, meaning that I won't be able to add a level manager unless I have a controller connection handler. So that's one of the requirements that I added, and I also added a using a statement at the very top. The other thing that I needed was a reference to the connection handler. So I created a private variable and of type connection controller connection handler, and it's initialized as null, but it's serializable, meaning that I'm going to be setting that through the inspector. So let me go ahead and open up Unity and then show you show you how that that one works. So if I go ahead and click on the See, let me click on the game. So if you look at the game object right now, I have what's called a game manager and it has an environment. So the environment is also very important because that's basically where I'm placing, what I'm gonna be placing the structures in Cubic, in Cubix. So the one that I want to focus on for, for this video is the level manager. So in the level manager, I need it because I'm creating the levels through the level manager, I want it a reference of the controller connection handler. So that's the reference that you see right here. That's the same as this one right here. So that was one change that I did on my level manager. So the, the next thing that I wanted to do too is I wanted to have a debug status. And, and the reason why I wanted to do that is because I want to determine when the level is getting generated, when it finished generating, and if somebody tries to generate a level and the level hasn't been generated yet. So if I go here, you can kind of see that that is mapped to that level moni monitoring label. So if I go back to the game, you can see that the debug status is, is mapped to that label, which by default, it starts with level monitoring. So let me just go back to that. And then I didn't change anything else in here. So the other thing that I added was the controller connection handler. So remember that I added the level manager and I made it a required component. So I needed to make a controller connection handler as well as one of the scripts to this game object. So if you're working on your game and you need to basically start, you know, controlling when something happens in, in my instance, I need to hold the trigger button to, to generate a level. So I need the controller connection handler to basically to pass that event from the, from the controller to the game so that I can generate a level. All right, so the other things that I did here, I left everything here by default, so I did mobile app. So this means that, you know, I can I can actually control my game with, with the mobile app. I can do it with the control, controller left, 
and then controller right. So these are just some different settings. I didn't really change these. I, leave, I left them as, you know, by default as what they are. So let's go back to the to Visual Studio Code and show you some of the other things that I did. So the way that this works is you add a reference like I, like I explained to you. And then in the Awake, actually in the Start, that's where I'm actually binding to binding to the different events that are part of the Magic Leap input. So on the Magic Leap input, I'm saying on trigger down. So that means when I'm when I'm basically pressing the trigger button, I'm gonna call this event. So if we go and look at that event, and I'm also I also have a reference on the update. The reason why I wanted to do this is because in the editor I want to be able to control the basically that method. So what I'm saying is, you know, if the input on the editor on my keyboard, if I press the G button, then I'm gonna be passing in basically default values, which is gonna be a byte and a flow with a minimum value. So, but if I'm not doing that through the editor, which means that this is actually happening from the control, this is gonna get a byte, which is gonna be a controller ID, and it's also gonna get a value. So for, for the requirements of my game, I don't need to do anything with the controller ID. I don't need to find out, you know, what controller it is, or I just need to basically execute the action. So what I'm doing right here is I'm saying, okay, if I'm in the, if I'm in the Unity editor, then I'm setting this Boolean to true. And if that Boolean is set to true, I'm gonna execute that action. The reason why I did this is because I want to be able to do to do basically the execution of the level generation in the error without having the controller connected. So back in the, you know, in the mode, if you're actually triggering this from the controller, you want to, you know, this will be set to this will be set to false, which means that this is gonna be the expression that is gonna be evaluated. The controller is not going to be null because I actually have a physical controller in my hand. So what I'm doing right now is I'm executing level number plus plus, meaning that I'm incrementing the level number that I'm going to generate. And then I call my routine to generate a level. So this is the existing implementation that I had. All I had to do was basically add a handler to handle when the trigger button is pressed on the controller and also add an override so that I can do it through the editor. So that's everything that I did in here as far as like the controller. So now if I go into Unity and I hit play, you're gonna see that I can now, I can now generate a level if I wanted to with just by pressing the, the G key. And you can see that that's actually getting generated. So if I hit G one more time, the, the incrementer that I show you on the level number on the very bottom, that one got incremented. We go back into that. We just go into the event. So, so this one got incremented by one because I'm I'm basically holding the pressing the G the G button. So, so level two is getting generated. The level three is getting generated, and you can see that the label is also changing. So this one it says done generating level four, and then generating level five. So if I go back to that label, which is a text box. So what's happening is I Basically, I'm setting the color to green when I'm generating a level. Then I'm setting the color to red if somebody tries to press the G, the G key before it actually completes generating the level. So I'm changing the label to red and then changing the, the message that displays. And then when it's completed generating the level, I'm saying done generating the level. So this is just for me for you know debugging purposes. That's basically not going to be available when I. When I release the game, I'll just probably just hide it. So the other thing that you, you'll notice if I hit play to stop the game, you can see I had some errors on the very bottom and that means that the I didn't have the controller attached. And that's because I really don't have the controller attached. That's because I'm also using, you know, I'm also using the ML input and that's using the controller. You can now see that I have a little controller, controller icon in here. I also have basically a little you know a little circle and this circle i'm using to determine it's called the cursor and that's to determine where i'm going to be placing the the structures so i'm using multiple things in here that i added from other examples so i'm using what's called a placement controller game object and in that placement controller if i go here it's basically an empty game object and that empty game object has a placement script 
associated with it. It also has a placement visualizer. It also has the placement controller itself. And to be honest, I copied that from another example that the Magic Leap provides, and I'll walk you through that example just here in a minute. So the, the thing to remember that is very important is that I actually refactor these from the placement example. So if I open the placement controller, it used to be that this placement example had basically an array of, of game objects that you could place. You could also basically toggle through different game objects that you can place. You can actually place a chair, you can place a frame on a wall. So I wanted to make it, you know, I wanted to make it custom for my own game. So let me show you, let me show you how that, that one looks like before I show you how I refactor it. So if I go to the project and we go into Magic Leap, Magic Leap examples, then let's go into scenes and we're gonna go and focus on the placement scene. So all I had to do here is just basically determine what I needed to move over. And you can see that, you know, a lot of these things are, are basically what I moved over. I, I copy all these four game objects Move, move them over to my scene and then refactor the code where I need it to. So the cursor, I'm using the cursor as this example has it, which is basically, it basically has everything already set up for you. Then I'm also using the controller, just as this one has. It has a controller connection handler. It has a controller and transform. I didn't change anything there. And then I also have a ML spatial mapper. So this is basically going to map the surroundings in your area. It's going to do what's called meshing, meshing for you. So it'll determine, you know, if there's a chair in front of you, it's going to create a mesh surrounding around that chair so that you can actually place your, basically your game objects when you're running this game in, in augmented reality. And then the one that is more, more important, I think all of them are important, but this one as well is the placement example. So what I did here is I, I refactor the placement example, I rename it. On this one, you can see that, you know, I have an array. There's four different items, a picture frame, like I stated before, a rock, a chair, and also a phonograph, a phonograph. So I, I didn't need four different, four different game objects to be placed. So what I did on mine, so basically copy all those four over to our scene then I already have the structure of the content in the rendering because I like the structure the Magic Leap has. Then if we go into our scene, which is in this case, the game that I'm working on, you kind of see that I these are exactly the same except for this one is called placement controller. So on the placement controller, I renamed the, I, I basically renamed the placement example to placement controller. So if I open up ours, which is the, which is the one that I refactor, Everything in here is exactly like the other example that the Magic Leap had. And the other thing that I changed here was I, re I removed the array. This is only one game object. So if you look at all the instances where I'm using that, this used to check for basically a length because it was checking for multiple game objects. And all I'm doing right now is just basically using one prefab, which is in this case is the environment prefab where I'm gonna be placing the structures. Then what I do is basically I check to see that the placement prefab is not equal null, make sure that we have a set. And it used to be that this used to check for the length and that's because there was an array. Then what I do is I create a reference to that, basically that prefab and I call it content. And then I place that content based on the position that I'm passing and also the rotation that I'm, pa that I'm passing. So this is gonna be the position that you're basically placing them in augmented reality around your area and also the rotation around your area. So then everything else in here is exactly the same. I also make some changes where it was actually toggling through, you know, the different up, different game objects that you could place. Now it's only doing, only doing one. So that's basically all I had to do to make it work. Let me go back into that other example and we can look and see how that one differs to, to this one. So if we go back into the examples for Magic Leap, and we can pull the examples, scenes, and let's go ahead and open up the placement. So if we go to the placement example, we double click on our placement. So this is what I'm gonna do. I think it's gonna make it easier so that I can show you exactly what was done on these two files. So placement example, like I said, is the one for a Magic Leap. Placement controller is the one that I refactor. So 
Just like I stated, this used to be an array, placement prefab, so just ba basically made it a, a single game object. I also don't need a placement index anymore because I'm not, I'm not toggling through those. So look, I already have it in my coding here, which I don't really need anymore. So you can get rid of that. And if we keep going down, we can kind of determine. So the other thing that I, that I don't need is if you look at this, I have on trigger down, on trigger down, and this one is using handle on button down. Let's look and see what Magic Leap was doing for that. So, so this one is so that you can toggle through and get the next placement objects because I'm using only one object. I didn't need to do that. So on mine, I removed the reference to that, basically that event. So, but if you needed to toggle, maybe you have different items that you're gonna be placing in augmented reality. You probably wanna use this method and you probably wanna modify if you need to modify the, the implementation. If you just need to select different items from your inventory, then this implementation would work just right for you. But if you only need one item to be placed in augmented reality, you really don't need a toggle. So you could probably just remove that piece. So if we keep going and look at, let's go back and, and look at the update method. So same idea here with the with the update method. The they have a the Magic Leap has an override. So if you want to do if you want to hold the end key to get the next placement item, you can do that. Because I'm not using that, I remove that piece as well. Let's see on destroy. They're basically re destroying the event that we that they got registered, which is on controller bound down. I I remove that piece because I didn't need it, but I am but I am destroying the untriggered down. Let's see the other things that I did in here that I didn't need was the handle on complete. So like I say, I removed these from mine. I didn't need to toggle through different items. Then this one is the confirmation. So this one for sure, we do need the handle on complete. We do need, except that I made, that I changed it, like I was explaining at the beginning. This is checking for the length. I don't need to do that because I'm only using one single item. And it's also trying to instantiate basically the item that you have selected. I don't need to do that. I just grab the placement prefab and then place that placement prefab based on the location that the user selects. Then on the create placement object, I also modify the code, so I didn't need to do that. I didn't need to do that. I'm only using a single, a single preview object. So I didn't need to do that through the array. So let's see, I think that's basically that's basically everything. And then I removed this method because I didn't need to loop through, basically toggle through multiple different items. So that's basically all I did. Let me just show you how this works. If I wanted, if you wanted to run this through the basically the remote. So if I go and look at the, let's see, I'm looking at the scene. Let me go ahead and focus on. Let's go into rendering, and let me go into our scene because this is the scene that this is the placement that Unity scene. So I'm gonna go into the game scene, and we can look at we can look at this one. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this window and we're gonna look at the Magic Leap remote. Make sure that you select the right version, which is 0.20.0. I'm gonna open it up. And I'm gonna show you how we can easily test this to make sure that it is working. It's a little hard to test with the simulator, but it'll give us enough, enough feedback to determine if things are working or not. So I'm just going to open it up and then click on Star Simulator. And it's going to be a little hard to see, but I'll hopefully can show you. So what I'm going to focus on is I'm going to go under Game and then Environment. So that environment is where, where I'm going to be placing the structures that I'm creating with Cubix. And then on the left side, I'm going to open up my Hello Cube room, which is the one that I've been doing for most, most of the sessions. The other thing that I did too as well, so that you know, if you click on this icon right here for the controller, you can override the controller, basically the input. So if you wanted to change basically the position of the control, which is gonna be this control, you can override this by just clicking on the plus symbol. And you can click on these ones, basically to map it to a different key on your keyboard. For instance, I'm mapping left and right to the letter D and the letter A 
down and up are mapped to S and W, in and out, E, R, and then, and then some of these rotations ones as well. So you're more than welcome to change those to, you know, to fit what you prefer. So once you have that going, all I really have to do is just go ahead and hit play, and it's gonna run the simulation on the left side. And you can kind of see that everything is starting to work. These mesh are really cool because you can now see, you know, everything that is getting created through the experience. So if I go here, you can kind of see that the furniture meshing is working. And if I start looking around, everything in Unity, it's getting, you know, it's basically getting mapped to a mesh. And the reason why this is happening in augmented reality is because it needs to know, it needs to be aware of the surroundings. So the what's doing that right now it's basically this ml spatial mapper is mapping everything around my area and the reason why i needed that is because i need to know which areas where i am i can actually place i can actually place things so if you if you can see there's a little arrow on the basically where i have my mouse selected right now and if i go down that arrow is moving so that arrow is actually the cursor so if we go and double click on the cursor, you can see that the cursor is red. That means that I cannot place the environment into that area. But if I start moving my, see if I start moving the rotation of the controller, that is actually gonna start changing. And now I'm starting to see a different color. So it's not red anymore. That means that, that I can actually place the structure in that area. Now if I go and hit F on the right hand side, that's actually gonna focus on that area. And, and now I know that the controller is working. It, it, I know that, you know, it's determining that there's a floor here. In fact, if I change this and I go to the right and I go in a little bit, you can kind of see that now I'm on that table. So if I move that and we go inside, we just, we just zoom in here so you can see. So now go back in here. And so now you see that I can actually place basically a structure in there. To place the structure in in here, I can actually place, let me see, I can hit the, I think I mapped that. Let me go into the controller. And I can look and see what the trigger button is mapped to. So you can also change those buttons. So the trigger button right now is mapped to Z. I got confused because the editor is mapped to, is mapped to G. But if you're running on the Magic Leap, and especially on this, on the on the remote, you want to use the basically the one that you're mapping to. So I'm mapping on Z, so I can go here and actually press Z. And you can see that the structure is generated at that position. So I know that that part of the code is working. So that's really all I wanted to show you guys. If I hit Z one more time, you can see that, you know, this is, you know, it's getting ger generated correctly. In fact, if I move, if I move around, the structure is getting moved. So I know that the, the controller is working and the placement implementation is working just fine. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And I want to mention that GameDev.net is my sponsor. They have amazing resources for game developers. So make sure that you check them out. And also don't forget to check me out in Patreon. I barely started a new page where you can help me in continuing in my journey. So I really appreciate your time and thank you very much for watching.